analysis, research and evidence is used to inform decision making across government and analysts work as part of multidisciplinary teams and in collaboration with other professions and functions to improve outcomes for the public. To support this, we've created a series of bite-sized learning, introducing some useful analytical terms and concepts which you might find useful in your role and when working with analysts. In this video, I will be explaining the difference between percentage difference and percentage point difference. Percentages can be used in two ways to describe the size of change. The percentage difference describes a change in the absolute value of something. Let's say your rent is increased from £800 per month to £1,000 per month. That is a 25% increase in the amount of rent you pay. It is calculated by taking the difference, £200, and dividing it by the original amount of rent. To get the percentage, you multiply by 100, which gives you 25%. Percentage point increase describes the change in a proportion of something relative to another. Let's say your net monthly salary is £2,000. How has your rent changed as a proportion of your salary? When your rent was £800 per month, you were paying 40% of your salary on rent. 800 divided by 2,000 is 0.4, or 40%. After your rent increases to £1,000 per month, you are now paying 50% of your monthly salary in rent. 1,000 divided by 2,000 is 0.5, or 50%. This is a 10 percentage point increase in the proportion of your salary that you spend on rent. Not only can you use this knowledge to correctly communicate changes, you can also use it to identify when the correct statistic has been used in evidence. Say an educational organisation is criticised because only 12% of its students from last year's intake came from backgrounds classed as disadvantaged in some way. When the new year intake figures are published, it announces that the number of students from this group have risen by 25%. How would you investigate this claim? When you get hold of the date, you find that the actual number of students from this type of background in year one was 48, and that the total number of students was 400. This is 12%. For year two, you find that the actual number of students from this type of background increased to 60. However, you find out that the total number of students also rose to 600 due to some increases in funding. This means that students with this type of background now make up 10% of the total student population. This is a two percentage point decrease. Whilst it is correct to say that 60 is a 25% increase on 48, the real meaning of the data is better described by showing the percentage point difference, which tells a different story. So, as well as being able to use the correct statistic, you can use this knowledge when assessing evidence to identify whether the correct figure is being used to convey the true meaning of the figures. We hope you found this useful. If you want to find out more, take a look at the Analysis Function YouTube channel gov.uk or sign up to the analysis function newsletter by emailing analysis.function at ons.gov.uk.